Hello everyone, my name is Jatea Wiley and I consider myself the ketogenic queen. I've been doing keto for about um, eight or nine months now and I was able to lose over 70 pounds on this ketogenic journey. I don't like to call it a diet. I do prefer to call it a lifestyle because I don't feel like I'm restricting myself from anything besides the things that my body really does not need. And this has been the easiest weight loss that I've ever experienced in my life. As an adult, I've struggled with weight loss all my life. Um, at one point, I was almost 300 pounds and I've tried all the different diets that there are out there on the market. I've tried working out every day of the week. A lot of those things were not working for me so I was really excited to find keto and really just the success that I've had has really, really, really changed my life in so many different ways. So I just wanted to come to everyone to talk about some of the reasons why people fail on the keto diet. So one of the reasons why people fail is because they are obsessed over the macros. Macros is pretty much the amount of fat, protein, and carbs that you are allowed a day on the ketogenic diet. So you are supposed to have 75% fat, 20% protein, and 5% carbohydrates in your day. So some people obsess over those macros in such a way that they really make it difficult to follow. Now, since I've started, I've not counted one single solitary macro. As long as you choose foods that are keto friendly, you'll be just fine. So as long as you are staying away from bread, pasta, rice, and potatoes, you're gonna do just fine. Eat the foods that are keto friendly, and that's all you have to worry about. I don't count macros, and I've really been successful. Another reason why some people fail is because they are obsessing over the scale. So you don't want to obsess over the scale. Our bodies fluctuate in weight very differently from day to day, even just depending on how much water you have or how much salt you, in, you have. And you really want to always keep in mind that when you get on the scale, it's literally a snapshot of what you did two weeks ago. So you don't want to obsess over the scale or worry about how much weight you're losing as compared to somebody else. And that's another reason why people fail, because they're constantly comparing their success or non-success as they might see it, because they're looking at what someone else is doing. So if somebody was on the ketogenic diet for as long as I have been, they may look at me and think that I'm successful if they only lost 40 pounds, but still that's a lot of weight to lose, a lot of fat. We like to just keep it real and say we're losing fat, not really weight. Another reason why people fail is that they're eating too much protein. So we do need protein on the keto diet. Again, it's not like the Atkins diet, where on Atkins it's more protein as opposed to more fat. This is a high fat diet. So you wanna make sure you're, you're getting about 20% protein in your diet, but really you want the fat intake to be where you're getting most of your food from. Um, if you have too much protein, then that excess protein will get stored as glucose and it will sabotage your success. So you don't wanna overeat the protein. You can have meat, but you don't wanna overeat it. You're not eating enough fat. If somebody is not being is not really successful on the diet, I always ask them, well, what are you eating? And it's so hard, it's such a huge paradigm shift to go from low fat, high carb to low carb, high fat. So some people just have a hard time wrapping their mind around eating more fat. You really do need to eat a lot of fat on this diet in order to be successful and you want to make sure you're eating the right kinds of fats. You don't want to um, eat like the vegetable oils. You want to make sure you're eating the, the healthy fats. And if you're not putting the fat in your diet, you won't be successful. So I'll ask people like, well, what are you eating on keto? And um, they might tell me something like, oh, I had a salad with grilled chicken. And when I'm like, okay, well, where was the fat in that? You can definitely have a salad with grilled chicken, but you wanna make sure that you're adding your eggs, your cheese, your bacon, your full fat dressing, um, your avocado, a few nuts, um, a few berries. You wanna make sure that you're adding the proper amount of fat that you require um, to be in the state of ketosis. So you wanna have a salad fully loaded like you normally would do, just skip the croutons. So um, tomatoes also have a higher carbohydrate intake, so you wanna make sure that you are lowering um, the t the, your tomato intake as well. 
but you wanna make sure you're adding that fat. Be sure to add the fat into your diet. I know it's hard to think about that. I know when I first started, I was guilty of that. I wasn't losing the weight like I wanted to because I was so afraid to eat the fat. Just because we have been programmed to think that fat is making us fat when really it has been the carbohydrates all along. But yeah, so you really want to make sure that you are adding the fat to all of your meals in order to be successful. So enjoy the fat. <laughs> Trust me, it's tasty. Now I saute all of my seafood in butter and um, I also add in my cheeses and whatever I make, I'm just never afraid. Now, I was at the beginning, it took me about three months before I really was able to add the fat like I needed to. So don't be afraid to add that fat. It really does make a huge difference. When you add the fat, you will burn so much more fat. So don't be afraid of the fat. Another reason why some people fail is because they eat processed ketogenic foods. So for example, I love to have an Atkins bar from time to time or a Quest bar, but really those processed foods, if we have them every day, it really does sabotage the diet. So you want to make sure that you are eating like whole foods and things that are not really in packaging so that you make sure that you're getting the proper nutrients. Another thing, uh, another reason why some people fail on keto is because they are not all in. So I have had people call me and tell me that it just doesn't work. And when I talk to them, I come to, come to find out they only were doing the diet for maybe two weeks and then they stopped and then they started and then they stopped. With keto, you have to be either all in or all out. You can't start and stop or have a week here and go off for four days. Keto, now, trust me, keto is very forgiving. Like I've had my days where um, I was at a party or it was a holiday or a birthday or whatever and I did have some cake or some pizza. So it is a very forgiving giving diet, but you want to make sure that you are committed to losing your weight and that you are determined to live the keto lifestyle because if you're not, there's nothing that I can say or do um, to help you. I, I can't want it more than you. So if you don't want it, it's not going to work. If you aren't committed to eating high fat, low carb, then don't even decide that you're going to do it because it's just, it's not going to work for you. So you have to definitely be all in and be committed to your own success. Um, so make, make sure if, if you do sign up that you have like an accountability partner or find somebody else that can help you. So make sure that you find somebody that can help you along the way. And if you are interested um, in joining my keto page, I have um, a keto page on Facebook and I also have a group. So I try to post a lot of recipes and tips and tricks that can help you along the way. So if you're interested in being in the group, I will leave that link in the comments for anyone. And one of the big problems I had when I started keto was I was not getting enough salt. And again, because we think that salt is so bad for us, but salt is really bad for a body that's inflamed. And carbohydrates cause inflammation. So once we eliminate the carbs from our body, we pretty much eliminate the majority of the inflammation that we have. And that was a huge thing for me because I was always inflamed. I stopped eating meat three years ago and I replaced that meat with pasta and I never was a pasta eater before. So when I started eating pasta on a daily basis, I had so much water on my body, like literally you can see the water shaking when I walked. So once you stop eating the carbs, all the inflammation is literally gone. So then your body needs more salt. You need that salt or else you'll feel lightheaded. You also need to get your magnesium or else you might find your body is cramping up. So you want to make sure that you have some source of getting some salt. And I would definitely recommend um, a sea salt, not a table salt. Table salt is not good, but sea salt um, is something that I definitely would recommend that you incorporate. So you may want to make sure that you're getting your salt and you want to make sure you're getting your magnesium and also vitamin D is also very important. So those were my reasons why I feel like people fail when they're doing the ketogenic diet. Um, those are some of the obstacles that I faced myself. And I know that if you simply stick to low carb, high fat, and no comparison, don't get on the scale every day. Make sure you're getting the proper type of nutrition into your body. Make sure you're getting that salt. Make sure you're getting um, that vitamin D and that magnesium. And make sure you're eating the healthy fats. You are going to be successful. If you want any information about keto, we are having a 90-day keto 
Cryogenic Fat Loss Challenge where you can win a lot of prizes including cash. So if you're interested in trying this ketogenic way of life, then go ahead and let me know and I will send you over some information. So thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate you all. All right, everybody have a phenomenal day.